welcome back to my video course about CRUD applications with Spring Boot 2.2 and Java 11. In this fourth section, we will concentrate on updating the books in our database. We will use HTTP PUT for this. In comparison to a previous section where we used HTTP POST for creating new entities, while using HTTP PUT for creating entities, we also specify an ID within the URL which book we want to update and pass the our update intent as a JSON body within the HTTP uh, request in the HTTP body. And also um, HTTP put in comparison to HTTP post should be idempotent means that if you call HTTP put, so you want to update it multiple times, it shouldn't result in a different state within the server. Whereas if you call or if you post an entity several times, you will have, let's say if you post it three times, you have three objects created. And if you do it with put, you just update it three times, which results always in the same state in the server. So you have to make sure that it's idempotent. And also we want to be a little bit restrictive. So if we want to update a book with an ID, which is not in our database yet, we will throw a 404 and inform our client that he just wanted to update an entity which does not exist yet. So let's start again with our tests. Let's first test the happy path where we make sure that we update an already existing book. So call the method update book with known ID update book. Again, this will throw an exception as we use mock MVC. So first we need we I think we can reuse our book request object which we reuse for creating a book. So in theory you could also update the ISBN in this example which from a business perspective might not make sense but for this example it's okay otherwise you would have to specify a specific detail DTO for updating the book. But in this case, everything except the ID can be updated. So this is our book request. Now we have to mock our book service. So once update book is called, let's say we pass the primary, the primary key and the book request. Here, as we don't want to specify on the, the equality of the objects, we will use the argument capture again and do it here and say then return. Let's say it's, it's just uh, the method will just return the updated book entity. So we can use our method our helper method here and the title is Java 11. Yeah, Java 12, we will update from Java 11 to Java 12. The author stays the same and also the ISBN. So that's it. This method currently does not exist, so we have to create it. Yes, it will return a book. Wrapper long type and just say return null. So our code compiles. And this one we can call it book update request. That's it. It should work. 
here, uh, once we use an argument capture, we also have to use an equal method. We can't use the argument capture in one side and for the other method argument use the specific value. So we have to wrap it here inside this equal helper method, which will make sure that uh, update book method call with the ID one and any request which we will capture and assert after the method call is called will return our dummy book which we create here. Okay, so now we have to use mock MVC to perform the actual call. We will do a put request as I explained it already. And within the put request, we will use the exact same endpoint as our other methods and just specify the ID of the book we want to update. We'll have a content and the content type is again of content type publication JSON. And the content is Expects a string, so we can use our object mapper to write our Java object as a JSON string. So it should work. And then we can start with our assertions. First of all, the status should be okay, so we should return 200. And for the content type, can also write an assertion that the content type is application JSON. And now, as we will return the updated book, we can copy our assertions here and just adjust it. So it should be Java 12 as we will update it, and the rest should be okay. Which typo? Application JSON. Okay. And last but not least, we can also use the assertions. For the argument capture we will reuse here. So here we will assert that the object that was captured here was actually the book request we passed to this mock MVC and here this should be Java 12 as we want to update the book with the ID one and update the title here. Okay, so that's the happy path and then we can write a quick test for Verifying that if we specify an ID which is not present in the database, our client should get a 404 and should be able to update anything. So let's say update book with unknown ID should return 404. Okay. Exception. And here I will copy a part of our previous test. And here we will specify that we don't return anything, but rather throw. Let's reuse our book not found exception here and say, or two so here make it 42 the client wants to update 42 and here it's not found so that should be the test for the um, path, here's the happy path and here's the bad path where we 
just specify that non-known ID can't be updated. So let's jump into the implementation of this. Should be really straightforward. First, we have to add a new mapping. We can use put mapping for this. And again, specify that an ID is passed alongside the request. Then specify the return type again. We will use response entity and return a book. And call the method update book. Again, the path variable ID here. And in addition, we have the, we also want to valid, uh, validate the book request. So the client can't update, for example, an existing book with, a with an empty title. So we can also make use of the add valid annotation here and specify that the request body should be mapped to our book request object. As we do it also in our post mapping. And here we can just delegate the update call to our book service and wrap the result into a response entity object. So here say update book has the ID of book request. That's it for the controller level. Now for the actual implementation. The logic for this is also really simple. First we have to fetch the book from the database and check if this book exists. So let's say optional book, call it book from database and make use of our book repository and call find by ID as the ID we got from the controller. Then do a quick check. We can reuse this check here. So if we don't find anything in the database, we want to throw an exception or book not found exception. And otherwise we can get the object from the optional. So This book from database get. So uh, now for updating, we can go two ways. We could first update all the fields with getters and setters, and then call the save method of our book service of our book repository again, and then it will merge it as it will find the that the ID is already existing. Another way. Which I will use um, is to make use of Hibernate's dirty checking mechanism. So we will wrap the sole execution within a transaction. Otherwise, the transaction would be started and committed only within our book repository methods. So now we will wrap the whole execution within a transaction. And at the end of the method, Hibernate will do its dirty checking mechanism. And as we here get an entity, this entity is managed within the entity manager. And if we update it, Hibernate will check that some entity or some entity attributes change and will perform the updates for us and we don't have to do anything. So we can just say book to update and call the setter. just pass the update intent here, Let's once again, same for author. The author was already there, so the title is missing. And in the end, we just return the updated book here. And you see there is no save method explicitly called, but I will show you it and we can activate the show.
show a scale attribute here and set it to true. And then you will see the update statements called and in the logs. So let's first test it with our unit test that our implementation works. Let's see. Take some time. But the test passed, so our happy path is working. Now test the 404 path. Also run this test. And after this, we can use Postman again and verify it manually. And then you will see that the book gets updated even though we don't call the save method explicitly. But first, let's see if this also passes. Yeah, it looks good. So our two test cases are green and the expected behavior is implemented within our code. So now we can test this with Postman that our put endpoint is working and we can really update books. First, let's see if the book with ID 2 is present. You see there is a book here. And let's up, try to update this book. So use book ID 2 here and specify the title. We want to change it to Java 12, new ISBN, and also a new author call send, you will see we get status 200 code and also return the new book which was updated and each here you can now see uh, the log output and you can see that hibernate called an update an update statement to update the attributes of our book and so it's got updated in the background and you can also specify it or verify it again here and see that if we call the get endpoint with the ID2 we get exactly this updated book and everything is working. So that's everything I want to show you for updating entities in the last section. We will have a look at the missing CRUD operation, which is delete. So we will have a look at how to delete book entities in the database. See you there. Bye.